World War II veterans. So you're watching some of these America's greatest generation that have been here imposed by that flag. Think how freaking cool is that? That's the stuff that gives you goosebumps right there. All right, let's go. There it is. Favorite. Oh, that's not yours. Favorite veteran. Yeah. <laughs> This is Glenn. He is the owner, proprietor of this entire museum and home of the Brave Brewing Company. They make beer. He makes these amazing cocktails in this speakeasy. So you've gathered, you said 100,000? Over 100,000 World War II vets have marched through here since 1991. Since then, this so, museum in Honolulu, this whole, we're, you know, we're what, how many miles from Pearl Harbor are we? Uh, we're probably about 20 miles away from yeah. Pearl Harbor. So remember, December 7th, 1941, 20 miles from where that happened, here Glenn Lives has created this amazing museum where these veterans have sent you things, given you things, patches, pictures. Yeah. You have the Jeep from Pearl Harbor downstairs, the movie Pearl Harbor. Yeah. So how did this all, so go back to 1991, you said you were doing tours. So we started a program, it was supposed to be one shot deal, December 91, we took 6,000 Pearl Harbor survivors back to their battlefield site. Hickam, Wheeler, Schofield, Connewood. Not only Pearl was attacked, the whole island was. It was supposed to be a one-shot deal. At the end of the two weeks, these old guys says, hey, this was really cool. We're gonna bring our family back, our grandkids, to share some of the history. And there was a hot meat turned into a full-time job. So we jumped ship from the tour company and started our own called Home of the Brave. So for 25 years, we took these guys and gals and their families, three generations, back to the battlefield sites along with Pearl Harbor. And this is the result. We had no idea we were gonna open up a museum. But as these guys would come in and share their stories, which I always say were better, sometimes worse than any Hollywood movie, a lot of these guys never shared their experiences until we actually brought them back to the battlefield site that they were stationed at the time of the attack. So this is a tribute, and really our goal is to preserve the legacy is, the, uh, is, is our mission of our greatest generation. When we were talking earlier, Glenn, and you'd mentioned that they were boys, 16, 17, 18, 19 years old when they were shipped halfway around the world. When you think about where you were at 16 or I was at 16, yeah. still in high school trying to figure out math homework, and they're off saving the world. Exactly. Remarkable. And, and once again, when we say stories that are better, sometimes worse than any Hollywood movie, a lot of these kids suppress that. They didn't share these stories until we actually brought them back to the battlefield site. So we'd have families and wives and just ball their eyes out. And I'd be like, we must have heard this many times before. He never talked about it. So it was somewhat of a healing. And then when they'd come here, that's when they'd really open up around other veterans, you know, because their wives would say, I never knew what happened to my husband. Now it all makes sense. So because the, the, the collection, you know, people say, what's your favorite, you know, article or, or your or artifact in here? It's the photos. Give a crap about the guns, the knives, and so on. It's the stories that go on in the photos under <laughs> Which is cool because they're lined on the walls on the way up to the speakeasy yeah. here throughout the museum are just pictures of World War II veterans. Our goal with this whole thing, you know, we do cocktails and beer, but really our goal is to keep these stories alive for a younger demographic that didn't get a chance to hear it from dad or grandpa. It's great grandpa to a younger demographic now. So these stories that I say are better, sometimes worse than any Hollywood movie, are stories that are on the wall or in the artifacts. When we get something donated to us, we don't want a gun, we don't want a knife, we don't want a uniform, unless we know the story. So we always ask, hey, send us a photo of dad or grandpa, and great grandpa, you know, and where did this artifact come from and so on. So this museum is kind of a living, breathing museum, sharing stories and keeping the, uh, the stories alive for our next generation. So the struggles are what? So here we are, what, 28 years later from when you started your tours? Yeah. And, and what's happened is military museums, it's not just us, museums in general across the mainland, boring to a younger demographic that's on their, yep. that's on their phone 24-7. And I'm not, I'm not dissing them at all. I mean, I have three kids, they grew up in this. And over the past few years, even my kids were saying, Dad, we gotta do something to draw a younger demographic in. And the reason is, 
they're not hearing this. We've lost that connection. Now, I heard the stories from my parents. They grew up, they were kids in World War II. My dad's older brother, who was seven years older, that's why he was in the fight at 17. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was older, of course. But now, as these World War II veterans, most of them have passed away. These young kids that are grown up now, they're not hearing the stories. We have a Pearl Harbor survivor that comes in every December, wow. and he's kind of our spokesman. And he just says, keep alive, you know, he, he tears up and sure. I get emotional. You talk about him because he's almost gone. These guys are almost all gone. And that's the problem, too. When you start forgetting that, you forget why we are the greatest country on earth. And you forget right. to pass those stories on or no one's paying attention. And when you don't, history is doomed to repeat itself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so when, when you hear these old guys talking, you say, oh, guys, you realize these were kids yeah. when they were thrown into the fight. You know, a lot of these guys joined up, I'm going to join. A lot of these kids were kicked into the military and they were thrown into hell. Which is another reason why what you do here is so important, because those that are left, that they haven't found that camaraderie to be able to share those stories with in a comfortable fashion, they can still do that. Absolutely. So that we can learn from it as well. We just have to be creative and smarter, and so we have community leaders that are drinking our Kool-Aid that are saying, you know, you're absolutely right. And the cocktails. Right. And the cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> that say, makes, yeah. <laughs> say, no, this is an important piece of Americana and yeah. Hawaii history. Huge. We, we share the stories of our local boys, but our 442 is one of our most popular beers. It's mm -hmm. an IPA, but it shares the story of these Nisei soldiers that fought over in Europe. They basically saved a group of Texas National Guards guys that were surrounded by the uh, Germans. 800 casualties. Wow. To, to save 100 and, you know, 40 guys is un unbelievable. But anyway, I, I appreciate your guys' support and letting us share our story with you. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I appreciate what you guys are doing here. We appreciate the drinks. We appreciate everything that you're doing. That's what America's all about, is giving back. For those of us that did not serve, how can we pay tribute to those that did? And that's exactly what Glenn's doing here in Honolulu. So next time you come here, make sure you come say hi and have a couple drinks and try their beers. <laughs> Aloha. their American Ale. It comes in at you with 9%, and it is a sneaky 9%, because you don't realize it's 9%. Luckily, that's my first one. Might do a second one here in just a second. It's called the Mini Mighty American. But this is just such a cool place, because of nostalgia, because you think about really how fantastic it is to be an American and all the freedoms that we have and all these people that have fought for us that have protected those freedoms. That's what you get a sense of sitting in this World War II era Jeep here. Complete with the shovel right here, the axe right here. This thing does not feel comfortable. So I imagine driving this around, you know, bouncing around like this, trying to get things done. They got it done. And that's why we're able to sit here today and drink these beers. So, from the brew mans, everybody that serves, from home, the Brave Brewing Company's Museum in Honolulu. Cheers. 
And if you want to help, and I urge you to, Lady Brumance and I are going to be helping as soon as we get out of here. Go to their GoFundMe page. You have to keep this place open. We have to. It's our mission now. Because Glenn has been working his butt off for the last almost 30 years to keep it open. We could chip in a little bit. Okay, it's GoFundMe. So GoFundMe.com. Remember, honor, salute. That's their nonprofit arm of their Home of the Brave Brewing. So go there, check it out. Right, Glenn? Absolutely. Thank you for your support. Let's save the stories, histories, and artifacts of our greatest generation. Amen to that. Cheers.